Okay, someone who sees the world as the final, a template of people who understand the efficacy of Christ, of Jesus Christ for years, an answer to cry of many and a blessing to thousands of people all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, male and female, young and old. Please join me in welcoming John Van, John Van, John Van Vroom from South Africa. I hope I pronounce your name correctly. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. <laughs> I will help you. It is Johan uh, van Furen. But you're very close. Thank you, Abusi. Johan Furen. Yes, van Furen. Johan Furen, right? Van van Furen. Okay, Johan Furen. Okay, Johan, you don't pronounce the J, you call it Y. You pronounce it as Y. Joan Vure. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Now nah, I'm going to do that again. And welcome to the Wildlife Jesus Christ story today. Johan Vure from South Africa. Over to you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I I'm so happy to have you online today. Thank you. So over to you. Um, without wasting much time, what we do at Wildlife is we around the name of Jesus Christ in marketplace for marketplace, leveraging on marketplace principle. And um, these are the key things we're doing. We we inspire people to go into the world, to go into the influences that shape the nation. When I mean influences, I'm talking about education, sports, um, family politics, uh, science and tech, um, economy, media, to go into those places and take those places for Jesus Christ in, in actually um, making him famous all over the world. So that's what we do with wildlife. And we are so privileged and we are so um, humbled to have you today and having this session to you. So without wasting too much time, I'm going to ask you this beautiful question now as we can start this edition of Wildlife, My Jesus Christ Story. Who are you? Over to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. That is awesome. That is good that you guys are busy working in the media and all over in the business and everything like that. Thank you for that. As you've heard, my name is Johan van Vieren. I'm 59. Married to the same wife for 39 years. So that is awesome. My wife is very patient with me, I suppose. I'm staying in Pretoria, uh, in Gauteng. And then I, I, we have three children and we have five grandchildren. I'm self-employed. I'm doing software development for different um, clients and that the specific customized uh, applications and mainly these clouds are within the cloud. So that's a bit about me. I know the Lord since quite a bit of time ago, unfortunately when I was a kid. Thank you so much. You, that last part, I didn't get that last part. The last part was I unfortunately did not start to know the Lord when I was very young, only at uh, I would say almost middle age when I started to know the Lord. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So if I'm going to go straight to the next question to you is this. I would like to know how you were able to meet with Jesus Christ. Thank you. How did I meet Jesus Christ? That is quite interesting. Uh, actually, a friend of mine and the neighbor actually invited us in in 1993 uh, to go to with him to church and it was a very traditional South African church and uh, when I stepped in the church and busy worship, worshiping the Lord I just 
in, in a sense, I just heard his voice. And that's almost as if he's asked me, who do we have here? And I knew that the Lord was busy speaking to me. And I said, Lord, yes, that's me. I'm back. I'm here. And that day, I actually commit, actually recommit my heart to the Lord and my life to the Lord. And then from there on, I was like a bit of wandering around for about six months, looking and trying to find a place where I can just call home. And eventually I, I found a place, a local church, and I just settled in there. And that really, at that particular church, that was my foundation uh, of, of my life, my Christianity life that actually started there. And I've never turned back. Praise the Lord. Ah. Oh, hallelujah. I, I love the last part, what you said, that you never turn back since you start following the Lord. That for me, it's an awesome testimony. And I'm thanking God for people like you who have um, learned to stay with God for years to keep inspiring young ones like us not to actually give up on it. So my next question to you now is this. What's your disposition about Christianity generally? How do you see Christianity generally in Africa, all over the world? Or let me just base it like this. What's your disposition about Christianity in Africa? Interesting question. I had to actually go and do a bit of research about the word disposition, trying to establish what is the, the real meaning of that. And for me, it was really about Christianity in Africa we're so diverse, we're so different. We, there's so many different cultures within Africa. Uh, even where I'm staying here in South Africa, there's, there's a vast majority of different cultures as well. And the one thing we always battle to convince the other party or the other grouping, listen, you gotta do it this way. And for us, we do it in a Western way. And for other people, they have got, they have their own culture and they try to convince us that we need to do it in their way. But at the end of time, for me, it is, it's not about the culture. What is the culture Jesus Christ has set before us? It, scripture tells us, uh, I think it was Paul who said that we must follow Christ as he follows Christ. And if we cannot follow Christ, we need to follow him. So we need to in, in, really uh, try to be like Christ or try to be like Paul. And if we do that, culture doesn't play a role for me. doesn't matter what mm. it is. Uh, it just doesn't play a role because as soon as you have a relationship with the Lord, culture should not play a role within Christianity. doesn't matter where you are in South Africa, Africa itself. doesn't matter where you are. Different uh, countries as well. Overseas, it doesn't matter. The cultures are different. The Lord's always the same. And we need to follow that example for me. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. You, you, your answer is rich. Your, uh, there's maturity in your answer. And there's um, um, lessons for reigning in the way you, you, you respond to that beautiful question. Thank you so much for that. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, my question to you is this. Is Jesus Christ relevant in today's world? Do you believe he's relevant? I, I would like to hear your view. Is this guy relevant in today's world? There's a lot of chaos all over the uh, lies, government. Is Jesus Christ still relevant in today's world? Thank you. I'm going to pull it a bit closer to to my personal level and I'm, I'm going to ask the question for myself and just perhaps just to illustrate this is is Christ relevant in my life in a sense that what have Christ done for me but then mm -hmm. I want to swing this question around what has Christ not done for me mm -hmm. how big a price he has paid for my life just to rescue me on a cross but if I look throughout the day I, re I really took on the Lord as my personal Savior, 
there are too many instances and miracles and we can just carry on testimonies what God has done for me. And I cannot imagine myself without him. I cannot be without him. I, I just cannot. I think a lot of people said, yeah, but what has Christ done for you? No, it is what he hasn't, you know, he's, he's done so much and he has influenced my life since that day in 1993. And I cannot imagine anybody else without Christ. And I, my heart goes out to people who think that God is not relevant. God is so relevant today. And, and, and really today, it is so important that we have a relationship with God because that will open doors for yourself and for other people if we can hear Him. Wow. Awesome. 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 I love the part of um, localizing the question that it's not about if this guy is relevant or if it's not relevant. What has he done for me and what has he not done for me? And you are able to tell me that there's nothing this guy has not done for you. Oh, thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> I'm so blessed having you in this session today because even myself, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. So my next question is this. It's about faith, finance, family. You're talking about miracles a few minutes ago, but I, I would like to, to, um, to let us um, maybe share one or two. If you have a beautiful testimony that you can actually say, this is the hand work of Jesus Christ. This is Jesus Christ and work at work whether in your faith life, um, oh, you shared about your faith, let's in your family, in your finance, your career, your business, if you like one or two testimonies that you love just to share so that the people of the world and every younger node can actually know that Jesus Christ is actually the real deal into this world. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you. For family, wow. I think that is every parent's scary part is having children when they mature, when they're teenagers. And as parents, we, we need to stay our, on our knees. We ne really need to be at a place where we can actually, with intercession, carry the Lord, uh, carry our children and our family members. It is so important. And through prayer and intercession, ch changes can happen. In my own family, we, we had some difficulties and, and I'm telling you through prophetic word and, the, and, and God speaking into, into your family, he just gives you the hope and the faith that, that, that a miracle is going to happen within your family. And that has happened within my family. I've seen so many miracles, so many changes, but it's only because God can do it. And, but we have to really just pray as, as parents and uh, not only as parents, but also for your family members around you and for your friends as well. Finances. Oh boy, that is a difficult one. So many churches or institutions exploit people to give money to the extent that people do not want to give because they really feel that the, that institution is actually robbing them from money, making misuse of the finances, just to gain finances for themselves. And that is the, that is the sad part, but there's also the other part where institutions are really just, they honoring the Lord and they want to seek the Lord. They really want to build a place uh, where, they can just for fellowship and things like that so their heart is in the right place now for those people for those institutions i've got no problem in sowing and i've learned throughout the years that there's this just one method for me i know the bible tells us that we need to mm -hmm. sow tithes and offerings and things like that but if i just take one step back what has the lord told me to do about the finances where do I need to sow finances? 
is it in that particular institution or church? Is it perhaps a lump sum of money you need to give to a friend? Or is it maybe just buying somebody a bread? But it boils down to, again, what is the Lord's instruction? What is the Lord telling you what to do with your finances? Hearing Him makes the difference. We need to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit for your family, for prayer, for intercession, for finances. If we cannot hear His voice, yes, we have the Bible as which will help us to guide us. But we need to come to a place that we can sit and hear what is the Lord telling us about these areas and what we need to do. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. You must be a great missionary. You must be someone who, who, who really follows the Holy Spirit to details. Why? Because the way you are taking it step by step by step, the Spirit inspires people to actually listen more and do research about the efficacy embedded in the name of Jesus. Thank you for that beautiful ones. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How were you able to navigate challenges that you had to, uh, challenges that have come your way over time? How were you able to navigate those challenges? Thank you. There's, there's one thing that I'm really sad about is that I have not learned the value of counsel. Why I'm saying that is that in, in, in our culture, it is so often that you, the man in the house, you make the decisions, you have to sort out the problems and you are on your own and you have to do things on your own. So it is a lot of things, a lot of relating back to pride, but that's a lot about our culture as well. And I've learned throughout the years, especially since I've started, uh, when I gave my heart to the Lord, that there's a different method. And, and again, scripture tells us this, this wisdom in the counsel of many. And that is the main thing. Wisdom in the counsel of many with friends you trust, but also there's wisdom in the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Navigating through difficult times, you understand what's a difficult time. You have the facts before you. You know this chaos. You know these problems. But if you submit your request or the problem area to the Lord and to your counsel, they can advise you. And especially if they have a relationship with the Lord, they can get godly counsel. And with that information and with that faith, you can navigate through difficult circumstances. Wow. You see what I'm saying? You, you, you beat the aircraft, you are moving, moving on the wrong way, then you lift it up, then you now did a soft landing, taking it back to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for keeping it real. I am so, so, so blessed doing this with you this wonderful evening, Lagos from Lagos, Nigeria. The, 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 the aspect of the genuineness of the spirit is what inspires me more and amazes me more in your personality. Thank you for being real. This is going to touch thousands, millions of people all over the world. I believe so. Thank you so much. You. What that um, is the Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. No, you, you've answered this question. You've answered it. You've answered it. Advice for African leaders on the efficacy of Jesus Christ. Plus advice for world leaders on the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Again, it all starts with yourself. It doesn't matter at the end of the day what's happening. You have to build a relationship with the Lord on a personal level. And if you want to, if, if you are a leader and you are, it doesn't matter what you do, it, it, you have to pray, you have to have prophetic um, counsel, you have to have prophetic intercession and people, but you need 
to listen to that advice. You need that counsel. You need that counsel around you. You are not a person or supposed to be a person on your own mission. If you're on your own mission, perhaps then you're trying to achieve your own, your own goals. But again, we, we're coming back. What is the Holy Spirit telling you with your, in your business in, as, as a leader? What is he telling your, your institution? Or the, it doesn't matter where you are, your business. What is the Lord telling you? And that boils down to the fact that you have to have counsel. You have to have Holy Spirit uh, telling you what is the plan, what is the, what is that you need to do. Again, Scripture tells us that man makes plans, and, and, and man thinks his plans is hundred correct, hundred percent correct. But Scripture tells us as well that the Lord says He makes, He will decide if those plans will come into fruition or not. So again, if we follow the plan right from the start, God's plan, then we should succeed. And that's what the Lord has told us to do. We should be successful. We should have the victory. But it boils down to relationship with the Lord, prophetic intercession, counsel. Because we, again, it is wisdom and counsel. We need that information. It is rather feel that you are inadequate but ask wisdom we have lady wisdom according to scripture there's lady wisdom ask lady wisdom i need that wisdom and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure she is willing and ready to tell each and every one of us what we need to do but we have to ask godly wisdom and follow that path wow Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What message do you have for young people now? Listen to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to your parents. Especially if they if they if they're Christians, if they're godly people, people with values. Listen to their values. And I'm, I, I've, I've mentioned right in the beginning that. I'm so sad that as a young man, I did not have a counsel around me. And that's why I'm saying we have parents and parents have a lot of wisdom and understanding. But if there's always others, we, we, you have relationship with other people, ask them wisdom and the counsel as well. And that will help you. But it's, again, it boils back to uh, once again, you need to have a relationship with the Lord as a young person. I wish I was, when I was a youngster, I had a relationship with the Lord. Um, I'm not sure how things would have turned out, but I'm telling you, uh, I cannot stop telling people about Christ and what he has done for me. And, you know, and I wish that for young people that they will come and that they will sit with godly people and learn from them. Tap their wisdom and their understanding because that, that will help them and that will help them not to run off into the wrong things. Wow. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So now your final word for tonight's session. Your final word for tonight's session final word for for your session i think at the current moment in time i think the whole world is in a bit of despair and really we are in chaos and for me it is that you cannot manage chaos seated on earth that we have to manage chaos seated in heavenly places. Think about it. Seated in heavenly places. I'm in Christ. Christ is where? Christ is in heaven. Seated at the right hand of God. That is where our wisdom, understanding, our whatever we are, who we are, or what we need to do is in heaven with Christ. But we are here on earth, but Christ is within us as well. But we cannot rule, we cannot control chaos from chaos on earth. 
we have to do it seated at heavenly places. Wow. Thank you so much for that beautiful 25 minute session of yours that was impactful, enlightening, and tremendous. I'm so, so, so happy for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of this edition of Wildlife My Jesus Christ Story with Joanne Van Voren today. And it has been awesome, it has been glorious, and it has been impactful. Thank you so much. Before you leave, sir, I'm going to still do one, to the one, on one thing for us. We normally close with this by saying wildlife around in the name of Jesus Christ. That's how we close. Wildlife, wildlife. around in the name of Jesus Christ. So over to you, sir. Wildlife? Wildlife around in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, you, you do it again for us. Wildlife. Around in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sorry, that, that line is not so good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.